Uh, I was thinking, uh, just uh, I will be very, very short, but maybe we have uh, the chance to talk a little bit with, uh, with Joseph and, and maybe kind of uh, relate a little bit also with Cedric and Lucius. Uh, and I thought like maybe just to show one project, which basically uh, came back with this idea of uh, walking and, and this project kind of relate with the idea of, of also like, a, you know, when I was doing the, the piece somehow, it's, yeah, you can see there. But it's this idea of uh, the impossibility to walk together or to try to generate a space where somehow also, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the capability of walking by somebody, maybe I just go through the images in case you have not seen the space. Well, it's, it's, the light is not there. But this was at the Hangar Bicocca in Milano. Uh, it was happening last year or a year and a half ago. And basically it's a space where uh, uh, very simple, if I will be moving here, somebody else will be moving in the back. And if somebody will be moving in the back, I will be moving here. I mean, it's a super uh, hyper uh, uh, sensible kind of, uh, uh, somehow that it draw kind of a coherent uh, uh, sociality or, or try to kind of uh, bring together some kind of uh, coexistence. Uh, and this is something somehow also, you know, just, just came back, you know, to see the, the Pavilion International, right? And then, you talk about the floor. Uh, well, I like to see this piece as a floor, right? But it's a floor that demands somehow the impossibility or the inability or the demanding of, uh, of how we might be able to walk on that floor. And somehow also, uh, you know, every time... I mean, that is also like... A, is a, is because there are three levels of floor. This means when somebody is stepping on the first floor, the second, the, the, the second floor disappears and so on and so forth. This means something which to, all the time it kind of it, it change according with the capability of moving of the people. And at the same time, you know, like, like try to describe, uh, uh, I mean, it's much more or less about object, I will say. It's much more about like, a, a try to survive or try to, to live together or try to form a sense of, uh, of sociability, of a presence into a space and until the extent that also the space do not exist until you don't enter into it, right? Because as you can imagine, it's basically are like a three layers. It's like a kind of a lasagna. Um, this means, you know, going back to, to Cedric Price, right, it's like, a, there is no problem, but opportunities. And I think so that's a little bit also like a, the, the way of uh, which I thought it might be relevant, a little bit also as a critique of the, of the objectification of architecture of what I'm seeing today in the Biennale. Uh, and at the same time, uh, the missed opportunity also of uh, maybe uh, the possibilities also of you know, it's like also the critique of the economy. I think so. Uh, I rather think about the capability to, to work together and, and doing something together. We might do something which is much more interesting instead of neglect something. And also, like, uh, don't give for granted. Uh, I mean, if you think that this is really like a floor, which at the same time is not only a floor in one level, but is also pretty much affected in the. This I mean also the other thing which I thought also in relation with Sergei Prague and Louis Burger, a, a book which I was pretty much inspiring, which is called The Hidden Dimension from Edward T. Hall, uh, which is uh, something which about a flying distance. This mean ab about also is about a, how near we can be one to each other, which is in, in, mean in this kind of floor, which is all the time bended according with the position of the space. One thing that you always have to be aware is how close you can get one to each other. Because there is a moment which two or three people, they get too close and everybody starts to fall as a kind of a social black hole. And then the floor kind of drown everybody together into a spot, which is very difficult to escape. And does it mean there is this kind of a spiral and moving somehow you have to kind of very carefully measure the distance that you are talking one to each other, right? And this is something where, with Edward Hall, I think so, and, and when Cedric also talk about hidden architecture and how we negotiate spaces among each other. Uh, just only, I mean, uh, there is one moment that you learn this kind of ecosystem that somehow uh, you perceive the others when the other ones start to move accordingly also to you, there is Molly Nesby, Joseph have been there also, you might be in some of the pictures. But the other thing also which I, which I think so is, uh, is interesting is like a, basically all this, this floor, let's put it up, this object is not really about, it's a floor which is, uh, is air, right? Because it's compressed air which is in the big volume which is down there. One big mistake, for example, that Bruno Latour uh, did when we were together in the conference that he thought that you can jump over there. You know, it's the, all this kind of preconceived idea that you can do something in some space, but actually it's impossible to jump. There's a huge volume of air, which at the same time, if I will go moving, it's kind of squeezing a lot. I think so, I don't know how many, a thousand of cubic meters of air. 
And at the same time, when somebody enters in the lower space, affect also the people in the upper space, right? Because it's all kind of interconnected. This means, you know, the attempt somehow, this piece is like, for me, is like kind of this impossibility to try to read architecture as this objectification and trying to forget about people, space, the air that you breathe. It became so heavy, right? Because you are aware that every breath that you do this will affect the people which are in the other level. Um, and I don't know. I let it there. <laughs> but thank you. What, what was really amazing for me was, uh, as you were saying at the beginning, this notion of actually when you stepped onto it, you realize that this is effectively a floor. It's something that is, is in, it's mobile, it's uh, indeterminate, it's continually shape, changing shape, uh, it's unpredictable, and it actually makes it much more difficult to move through space. Yeah. And I think one of the uh, interesting things about the uh, elements exhibition at the center is how it really uh, lays bare the main agenda of the modernist project, which is to make buildings into machines for making everything as easy as possible. They're mm. extremely functionalist machines in which there's a, an incredibly complex network of uh, cables and cavities and insulation and mm. channels and ducts and mm -hmm. uh, moving parts that are actually all mm. dictating how you use that space. Mm. And what your project here is doing mm. is actually completely undermining mm. our accepted notions of how you interact with something your weight is resting mm. on. It's, mm. It actually makes it, it was when I came out of the space, I think I must have spent about 30 minutes in there uh, <laughs> uh, giggling mostly. Yeah. It, it makes you really yeah. laugh. It's, for yeah. some reason, you're instantly transformed into a child in a way. Mm. And mm. Uh, I, we mm. were kind of just rolling around and uh, having fun and taking photos and whatever. Mm. And then you came out and you were actually completely exhausted by mm. this experience. Mm. But mm. it was also incredibly energizing mm. because you had a completely different a, a, an experience that you mm. never really mm. had before mm. of how mm. actually mm. Uh, movements that you had never made before. Yeah. No, I mean, but just a simple thing, you know, it's like a, you learn all the time somehow, I mean, to walk, no? Going back to Lucius and when he was walking on the cities, I think it's something which I'm still learning. But to a certain extent, you know, um, you always walk alone. Uh, or when you swim, you always swim alone. I mean, it, uh, and in these cases, it's almost impossible to walk alone. Uh, you really, I mean, re really, really affect uh, the space of somebody else. Just only by squeezing it, because people in the lower level will not be uh, access and the space will disappear. Or just because uh, you reverberate too much from the other one. This mean, you know, it's like, a, for me, it's like a kind of a, just as an exercise to think, you know, that, um, you know, like rehearsing, that, you know, it's like a kind of, to a certain extent, a kind of a, a white butterfly effect, uh, which somehow, you know, your action that you are today here, you might never know where there will be repercute or somebody else will be affected. And, and what, I don't what, know. How, how many people actually, so there's, there's also something quite, um, I wouldn't say violent, but quite, uh, it's a very deep experience, actually. It's, it really undermines some of the certainties of your mm. notions of, um, but it's, it's a little bit like, a, at some moments I had this, a little bit like when you're flying in a cloud mm. and you have, mm. or you're in a, a, sand, a, a, a mm. blizzard of the South Polar mm. in Antarctica mm. somewhere, you have this condition of whiteout mm. where you no longer know where is up mm. and down and mm. which is direction yeah. is forward and yeah. so on. Yeah. Sometimes it's a little bit like this, you don't really understand. Mm. Uh, it really disorients you yeah. deeply. Yeah. And how, how many, have you had a lot of uh, reactions of people being deeply disoriented by this, apart from the fear of falling, which of course yeah. is part of the game mm, of uh, mm. being there. No, m mostly it's about also like a... Um, w what I discovered mostly is like also, and I think it's also related with uh, how Tino uh, Segali is doing his, some of his work also. I mean, the, the worst what it happens is like if you teach people what to do and what not to do. Because then, uh, and also like to prevent panic attack because there is a moment which people enter into the space and get uh, kind of completely paralyzed. Uh, but then it's a kind of, a, it's a lot of... Uh, uh, you know what I mean? If, if you exactly start to explain, look, don't get too close to each other, otherwise you kind of fall in a hole and then you will not be able to escape. Try to keep distant one to each other. Don't go too close to the walls. Uh, well, besides take out all the kind of a sharp object. But somehow all the time, what, what it, you know, if when you enter in a kind of a, a state that you don't know the rules of the game and the rules of the game change so much according to what you, people behave much more. Uh, uh, better somehow, or they, they kind of the state of responsibility towards one to each other is much more higher. And this I mean there is this kind of also hidden dimension, let's put it back about this kind of hidden architecture, or not trying to explain, not trying to say, 
where they are. But, uh, I want to say just one very brief uh, last thing that we are now working on a book about spiders, yes. um, which will be coming out in a couple of weeks in Genova. And uh, I invite you to um, uh, follow Azinello Press, which will be releasing the first uh, volume of um, uh, this new series of pub artist publications. And Thomas yes. is beginning with a series of experiments on spiders. But in a way, I felt like this is almost uh, an experiment in transforming us all into spiders. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> and thank you, everybody.